Hi, it's Lucy here and today I'm going to create nine cards and two gift tags using these two gorgeous 12 by 12 papers. They're double sided, but I'll mostly use the one sides. I've sketched some quick de card designs to give me a starting point. I want to take full advantage of the flowers and bird on this sheet, so I decided on their placement on my first cards. You can always cut the pieces out, but if you have rectangle dies, it's really easy to create the size you want without thinking or measuring. I do love the stitching on my rectangle dies too, so this gives it a really nice finish. And I love that the biggest rectangle die cuts out my card size exactly. Oh, and I have the links to everything I use below in the description too. I have all these strip dies. I love using strips on my cards so I can never have too many. This first one is a pink fresh one and this is a uniquely creative sentiment strip die but it works perfectly for cutting strips of any type. I recently purchased these slimline strip dies as well and this will be the first time I'm using them. A few of you have asked about my Sizzix electric die cutting machine and how it works, so I'll show in more detail quickly now. I've also just purchased the Magic Map from scrapbook.com and I've been waiting to use it. I wanted my first time to be on camera so we can check it out together. But just a note that it was a quick learning curve and this was the only time it didn't cut all the way through this first time. I needed to add a shim like scrap paper to give more pressure. I'm not speeding this up so you can see how long it takes to go through. I've also kept the sound into this part so you can hear how loud it is. I do absolutely love this machine. I tidy up bits on my desk most of the times while it's going through and you can also put it in reverse. So I didn't use a shim. A few parts didn't quite cut all the way through, but I don't want to risk putting the papers back through the machine in case the dies move. So I'll use my craft knife to finish off the cutting that didn't go all the way through. As I mentioned after this, I didn't have another issue as I used scrap paper to create more pressure. I should have read the simple instructions that comes with the magic mat as it mentions that I may need to use a shim or two or three for cutting. I use scrap paper for a shim so I'll add two pieces of print paper doubled over and that helps to cut even this thick cardstock perfectly. If this saves me buying new cutting plates often then I'm happy to do that for sure because I die cut a lot. I've actually broken three or four manual die cutting machines in the past by being too pushy with it and breaking the handles so I decided to buy myself this one for Christmas and apparently if the items trying to push through are too big it simply doesn't accept it so I'm fingers crossed I can't break this machine. The other thing that I love about it is that I can cut out a lot of items at once too. If you have little punches or dies, you can use these with the scraps left from die cutting. They make the perfect matching embellishments for your cards and I'll use a few of them today too. So one last time to show it works brilliantly. Here's some more dies I'll cut out and I'll add scrap paper again. I'll add two doubled over sheets on the thick card stock as it requires more pressure. So in reviewing this machine and the magic mat, I absolutely love both. I will always be truthful about the items and this is why I don't show you my guillotine. I don't love it enough to give a raving review. If you have a guillotine that you love, I'd love to know about it though as I've bought many and I've always gone back to mostly using my knife and ruler. I recently purchased this new word die set and I'm so excited to try it out. I have a link to it below if you love it. So it cuts out beautifully even on this thick gold paper and again I'll punch out some little butterflies with the gold scraps. Look how amazing this word set is. I love the intricate gold outline. It's just beautiful. So warning, sirens should be going off here. Look what I do. My birthday die was hidden under my scrap paper and I didn't see it. So it all goes through my machine. This is some type of test for my machine that I would never have tried on purpose. I was confused as to what had happened at first. It's actually permanently etched the sentiment into my strip die. Luckily, both still work perfectly and my machine was unharmed. So there's a test you won't see anywhere else. 
So now on to creating the cards in this first one I'll use the rectangle piece I cut out and I want to mount it onto a piece of paper so I'll see what I like best out of the gold green and pink I settle on the green I like to show you the options sometimes of the others as well so you may prefer a different one and this will give you ideas of what will work I'll just cut around it I do have a guillotine as I mentioned I just prefer to use my craft knife so I'll add double-sided tape to put it all together I use a little bit of glue to make sure it sticks permanently too I die cut the floral paper so it would give a lovely contrast between the gold and the creamy background paper I'll use a glue pen to stick these two parts together. I find that you need to be extra careful with glue when using shiny papers like gold and silver as it loses its luster in the places where glue gets smudged onto it. Wow, I love this sentiment die set and I'll be using that often in the future. I find I can't have too many word, birthday word dies as I create a lot of birthday cards. I can use my normal glue bottle now and if it gets clogged I just use a pin to clear the metal tip and it's good to go. Don't forget to add the plastic top to the glue when not using though because if left overnight it's much more difficult to un unclog. I'll use my ruler to ensure the sentiment is straight. Usually I'd use my tea ruler but I couldn't find it. The story of a crafter's life, hey. <laughs> I feel like the birthday part will look better if I add in the holes with gold paper though. So although it's a little bit fiddly, I definitely think it's worth it. So I'm going to use a couple of those gold butterflies I punched out to finish this card. I bend their wings over a lollipop stick. I'll add one gold butterfly over a green one for a nice shadow. This card was quite quick to make, but I think it turned out quite pretty. So the second card, this card was so easy to make. The only thing that took time was the fact I added to the card upside down. I can't have the bird topsy-turvy, so I'll need to cut off the whole of the front card and add it to another card. It's okay, it gives more weight to the card and I can use the other part of the card for scraps. I make this mistake more often than I should. <laughs> I'll just see what birthday sentiment looks best and add that to the card. I printed and foiled these sentiments using my laminator in an earlier video and I'll use the happy from one of those. I'll add a uniquely creative vellum cut which is adhesive. The best way to get them off the backing is to roll one side like this. I'll add it to the side of the card and cut off the overhang which I can use on another card. Isn't it gorgeous? It's not It's not me. These papers are incredible but you can use any papers this same way if they have a design on them. But if you do want these papers I have a link below. The vellum is sold out as an item separately but you can still get the vellum items in the full kits. Card three, I've die cut this piece out to cover the whole front of the card. I'll decide which way I want it to go and then I'll tear the top of it. I'm going to add the beautiful floral paper to the top. I don't want to waste all the floral paper so I'll cut to roughly what I need and then I'll add some scrap paper to the bottom of the card just to make it level for the next layer. I'll add another layer of scrap to the bottom piece so it has lovely height to it. I'll choose a sentiment. It's difficult as I love both of these on this card but I decide to go with the green one and I'll add glossy accents to it to give it a lovely shiny finish. I'll add some of the glittery butterflies to finish off the card too. This was another super quick card but lovely nonetheless I think. I hope you're enjoying them so far. For the next card I have this thin strip of the designer paper. I'll cut it even on both sides and then play around with what's the best place for it on my card. I decide on the left hand side and I'll add the floral paper to the other side. I'll tear the floral paper so it has a nice white edge to it. I'll use a leftover piece of white card to the right side so the floral paper sits a little higher than the other side. I'll just pop the floral paper over the taped part of the card and cut around it. No measuring required and I love that. 
I'll add some of the vellum floral print to the top to mesh the two sides together at the top. I'll choose the best sentiment for this card which will include the gold glitter paper and clear vellum shadow. I'll also add a green shadow under the gold to help it stand out even more. I'll fussy cut a few flowers out to give some more depth to the vellum flowers at the top. I'll give the flowers some depth by using the lollipop stick and bending the petals around it. I'll add a butterfly and another sweet card created pretty quickly too. Card 5. I'm going to use the other end of the floral paper at the bottom of this card. I have a scrap here which might look nice but in the end I go with a large floral cluster instead. I love the gold with this paper so I'm going to die cut this sentiment with gold and white. I think the white will give it freshness and stand out. I'll add foam tape to the flower cluster so that that sticks up higher on the page too. Once I've put the glued sentiment down I always like to put something heavy on it just to make sure that it lies flat and stays flat. And then the card is finished just like that. Card six, I have some white card here and I've cut it a little bit larger than I'll need so it'll be easy to die cut when I'm done. I'll be using some of these gorgeous strips for this card. I'll add double sided tape to each piece and add them to the white card leaving gaps between each. I'm just eyeballing the spaces, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'll die cut it with my rectangle stitch die one size smaller than my card. I love using lots of white with busy paper like this. I think it's a great contrast. Don't worry if you don't have rectangle dies, you can just cut a rectangle any size to suit your card. I've die cut a circle and scalloped circle both in white and I'll add a pink sentiment which I added the double side tape to before die cutting so it's like a sticker. I lost footage here so unfortunately I can't show you how I made the rest of the card but I did use some glossy accents and put two little gold hearts on it and you will see it at the end of this video card seven and i love how some of my strip dies have skinny strips in between the actual strips i love that using those too i've already created some videos on strip cards so you can check them out for more ideas after this one if you need more inspiration for this card i'm going to use the floral paper and gold strips I'll first cover some white paper with double sided tape and then simply start adding the strips on an angle so they don't have to be perfectly straight. I'll alternate between floral and gold papers using the different width strips randomly. Once I've added all the strips I'll first cut off the overhanging bits so I make sure to die cut the rectangle out nicely. If I don't do this I could accidentally die cut where there's no white card underneath. I'll add a vellum floral print to it and a gold sentiment but I realised afterwards that the happy birthday didn't stand out so I die cut it again in white and I added it over the top of the gold. 
I didn't like to waste the gold sentiment, but it would have been too difficult to pull off. So now the sentiment has lots of lovely height to it and I'll accept that. I also added glossy accents and I think it looks much better in the white and you'll see this change at the end of the video. Card eight. Okay, it's a nice, easy, quick card again. And this is one of the rectangle die cuts again. I found this gorgeous flower bunch that I fussy cut out from the same kit. By the way, this is the Uniquely Creative July kit called Sweet Magnolia. And there's still a few kits left as I make this video. But please be quick if you are interested. This collection, um, I've made a lot of cards already using this kit. And I've already made another video with other ideas and card designs using it too. I move things around until I like the design. Silly me here. I moved the rectangle over to the left hand side and I liked that idea. Then I completely forgot when I glued it down and I added it to the center next time. I like a little tear when I feel it needs something in a corner. So I'll create a little tear in this top left hand corner and I'll add some floral paper underneath. I want the card to be level so I'll add some scrap paper around the floral paper so that it's all level underneath the card. I add some glossy accents to the sentiment and the flower centers, then add a little glitter to it. And I think this just gives it a really special feel. And then this card is finished. So on to the last card, card nine, can you believe it? I don't have a lot of paper left, but I do have these three bits. So I'm going to overlap them. I'll pop down the floral piece first so to the eye it looks like the card is floral and that the other two pieces are have been put over the top. I'm making sure they definitely fit the card front when gluing together and then I'll die cut them all in one so the stitching is on all the pieces. When adding a piece that's the same size as the card front, I add three width ways double-sided tape and take the backing off the bottom tape. Then I'll line up the paper with the folded edge of the card. Then I can stick down the other edge. This way I know the folded edge is perfectly covered and if the other side has a little bit of the card showing, I can always trim that off, but we can't trim the folded edge. I hope that makes sense. Once that first piece of tape has secured the paper to the card, I'll then go ahead and remove the other two tape backings. I love this nice long birthday die, so I'll use that alongside one of the happy dies I have. I decided I love the gold for this die. It really makes it pop. I've added a vellum bird too to give some interest to that corner and the card is finished. So this is all I have left from the two sheets of paper, but I feel like there's enough to create a couple of matching gift tags. So that's what I'll do. So I used up these two papers completely and then just added a few embellishments from the same Uniquely Creative kit and used a few dies and cardstock and that's about it. I love creating these type of videos. Did you get any ideas from watching this? I hope so. The cards took one afternoon pretty much, but editing the video, etc., takes a lot longer. So I'm so happy to hear many of you saying that you enjoy watching them. It really means a lot and encourages me to continue videoing my card making. So please share my videos with any of your crafting friends if you think they'd like them. And if you love any of the items that I use, please see if there's a link to them below because if you use these links to buy the product, I receive a small commission and it really helps me to continue putting a lot of time into creating my YouTube videos. Do you have a favorite 
card or idea from these please let me know i love hearing about it so i'd love it if you could give this video a thumbs up as well if you enjoyed it it really helps youtube know it's a good video i love reading your comments and if you'd like to see any more of my videos please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already thank you to all my subscribers don't forget to click the notifications bell if you want to be notified when i add a new video to so happy crafting and bye for now. Thanks for watching.